Welcome to the Sustainability Series, the video podcast that discusses all things centered around food sustainability and the greater good. I'm your host, David Singleton, and this is my co-host today, Fiona, and we're going to talk, talk about food sustainability in the hospitality industry. We'll discuss the ins and outs of this amazing organization, Foodworks. We're joined today by special guest Robert Walton. He's going to talk to us about the importance of food sustainability, and he's also going to demonstrate an easy dish we can all try at home. Welcome, Bob, and it's great to see you. Bob is the president of the Restaurant Association, and we really, really are privileged to have him join us on the series. And thank you, uh, Bob, for joining us. We know how busy you are with you. all the work you're doing around the world and in the restaurant industry. Um, and we, we're going to try and get your... Um, your take on food sustainability. Um, and, and also with that, you've become very famous over, over lockdown, haven't you? With going <laughs> back into the kitchen and cooking again. It, it has been, uh, yeah, you, you're a chef, aren't you? At heart, uh, Bob, and, and, and welcome. And I can't wait Thank to you. see what you're gonna cook from the back shelves of your fridge today. How are you? David, thank you. Thank you. Good introduction. Long introduction. I loved it. It's a bit like a Piers Morgan introduction, actually, that was where I've got, I only end up with three minutes left. But, um, absolutely. So thank you, David. And, and thank you for the whole team for inviting me to do a little bit about sustainability and a little bit about what I term as kitchen management. Well, kitchen management almost turns into sustainability because it's about any kitchen within the restaurant world one has to use up what you've got otherwise you're not going to make your cut you're not going to make your profit so the very first thing i do is you see this bottle of champagne well it was opened uh, prior to this so the most important thing is to keep drinking it so the very first thing i do is have a glass of champagne <laughs> yeah, i don't think the team you. down at uh, the food sustainability uh, are drinking champagne in the warehouse and i drinking champagne students are drinking <laughs> i do some i've got some water as well but you know, we don't want to waste anything. The most important thing, though, David, is um, is that what I thought I would do is, uh, and you're absolutely right, I've loved um, the world that I've been brought up in, which is hospitality. The world I started in was as a chef, and I've been a chef for many, many years. And then it evolved into other things, into events and all kinds of global brands that I work with. But lockdown has been incredible for me to do two things one to rekindle my love for food two more than anything is to learn and to rekindle my love for produce because the produce we have locally i'm on the you said i'm a, uh, just outside uh, in a village outside reading and we have a local farm shop which is fantastic and the produce we've been we get is incredible and i have love smelling carrots again and enjoying using up different products and different foods that we we've, we've, we've ended up cooking so when I was asked to do something and using up waste, I thought, well, I will do exactly that. I will use all this, everything here was food that you may have thrown away or you may think, what am I going to do with it? So I thought something that would be brilliant for the family is to create a dish that families love, which are potato skins. We all love potato skins. My favorite. But to do four different potato skin recipes using up foods that were in the back of the fridge. And that is essentially kitchen management, hospitality management. If you listen to any chef, it's about planning what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it. And it's exactly the same in a kitchen at home. You need to just plan it, otherwise you will have waste. So what have I done? Well, I will show you exactly what I've done. I have prepared too many potato skins for today, but I'm gonna do two of each. And then I'm gonna carry on doing something for my own my own family later. So potato skins can be filled with all kinds of things. So the very first one we would do is some bacon, bacon and cheese. We all know bacon and cheese. And if you want to put a little bit of creme fraiche on, I've got some cream in there that actually, I won't have time to do that, but it's going off. Now, what do you put on top of um, cheese and bacon potato skin? Sour cream. It's perfect. That's what you need. Cream, sour cream is cream that's going off yeah. 
not not to not to the off off point when it's got stuff growing on it. But so there's yeah. the first one. Perfect. So that works brilliantly. The second one, using up some of that cream, is I thought, what goes beautifully in potatoes? Well, we all love a dauphinoise. We all love dauphinoise. So I have made onions, and I've actually put some leeks in here because I had some leeks. So I've got onions and leeks in cream. Now, I don't need to put potatoes in because they're going to go in a potato skin. So I'm going to have a dauphinoise with leeks, potato, put some cheese on top. Then another dish. And what do you think about potatoes? Potatoes go with everything. Mm -hmm. So I made a ratatouille. Now, a ratatouille in there has got onions, it's got courgettes, it's got peppers. And when I show you the video of the courgettes, you would have thrown the courgettes away. <laughs> when I show you the video of the pepper, you would have thrown that away as well. And then finally, which I really love, this one, is cauliflower cheese is fantastic. We all love cauliflower cheese. I bought some of this green cauliflower. It's not called green cauliflower. It's a cross between cauliflower and broccoli and it's called Ramanesco, I think, if I've got it right. So why not put some Ramanesco in potato and put some cheese sauce on top? So why not have a cauliflower cheese potato skin? And absolutely why not? That's what we're gonna do. So there's gonna be four potato skins. Each one of these, you wouldn't do all four. You would choose one, or you can do anything you want with potatoes when you think about it. I made a Spanish omelet yesterday, which is another good one to use up. And do you know why I made a Spanish omelet? Is because we wanted to use up some eggs. And when I thought about a Spanish omelet and I actually fried the <laughs> potatoes, a Spanish omelet is basically egg and chips, isn't it? Because mm. you're frying potatoes and you've got eggs. So when you think about it like that, it's just cold and beautifully put yeah. together. Mm. So anyway, I'm now going to start the process of doing a few and putting a few together. Then we're going to stick them in the oven. They should only take about 10 minutes. We're going to have a chat. Absolutely. Um, so the process is this. Right. I've got, oh, by the way, you have the best mashed potato out of these potato skins, which that's for another day. We can put those in the free in the freezer. So let's now just move a few things around and then I will show you how this goes together. Finn, this is in just the like meantime, if you want to ask anything, ask me anything. Well, well, it sounds like we've helped you use all of your leftovers, which is great because, uh, you know, we wouldn't want anything going to waste. And you, you said you're making quite a few today, but, um, you, you know, you can freeze them and use them throughout the week. So um happy that we can be of service there but you know thank you very much for coming on and uh yeah it's just absolute pleasure to have you on today and uh, we're really looking forward to learning all about your um experience in the hospitality industry and and your thoughts on food sustainability as well well it is the key it really is the key so anyways i'm just going to start working now so i'm going to do the cheese and bacon ones first we all love cheese and bacon ones so I'm going to do the cheese and bacon ones first. Basically, bacon in the bottom of the potato skin and cheese on top. I mean, it really doesn't get a lot simpler than potato skins. Uh, and potato skins, you know, are just baked potatoes, of course. That's all you're going to do. And then having those with some, with some sour cream. And you know you can make sour cream with real cream by just putting some lemon juice in it. You know that, David, don't you? Yes, of course. But you don't crisp the, the potatoes up, Bob. So you, you just bake them and hollowed them. You, you haven't. I'm just, them I haven't crisped them up because, I, to be quite honest, I didn't have time. But you could put them in and crisp them up. What you could right. do and what you should do. But I was trying to make this, David, you, you're absolutely right. Look, what I would do is I would put paint them with butter. Yes. I would season them. I would stick them in the oven and I would crisp them up. You're absolutely yeah. right. But I, what I was thinking of here was this is this is for family mm -hmm. and the family have just done it. And I and I through lockdown, one of the things I've really thought about is what happens if you have like three kids or four kids or however mm -hmm. many kids and every day all they're saying is, you know, what's for dinner? What's for tea? What's for, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and you've got to keep coming up now. So the process of what you just said, David, is exactly right. Mm -hmm. But is mum going to do that? So that's the way I've sort of thought about it. Uh, yeah, well, and the, 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 girls were, or the, the girls went down to the uh, food sustainability warehouse in the week. And I was shocked. I was in a meeting and my phone was going on Zoom. Did you go as well, Finn? Uh, I didn't. I'm actually going tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to uh, finding out about. 
But my phone was going, going, going. And Holly's on, yeah. And she said, Dad, you have just got to see what's coming in here. And Bob, coming into the warehouse was perfectly good food from yeah, all I'm the sure. major supermarkets that was on this use by date. Yeah, yeah. And uh, otherwise, it would have gone to waste. There was everything yeah. that we would have in our shopping trolley. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I mean, it just is, you know, it's the use by thing, you know, use by doesn't mean to say it's going off, you know, yes. look, David, I'm, I'm a, a lot older than you, but there will be times when, when you just go into the fridge and if you smelt it and it didn't smell right, it wasn't right, was it? I mean, it was That's simple right. as that, wasn't it? I mean, you didn't have to look at labels. You just went, oh God, I'm not eating that. That's absolutely I mean, right. It's it's pretty simple stuff. You know whether it's right or wrong, you know. Yes. Um, yes. Now, look at these, by the way. I hope, I don't know if you can see it. These are looking mm. amazing. Yeah, they're um, looking great. So now this is my little pièce de résistance, this one here, because this is the one I absolutely love with my knife. Um, this is the one I really, really like, is we're going to just slice this little piece of cauliflower up, mm. which is that, um, and we're just going to put it in tiny little bits. Look. And we're going to put it in there and in and this you've one. You've that, have you, Bob? That's all pre cooked, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I blanched this. Yeah, pre cooked yeah. and I refreshed because so you're basically going to pre cook your cauliflower mm -hmm. and then you're going to refresh it. So you pre cook it yeah. and you um, and then you just stick it under cold water. So stop it cooking and it keeps the color. And it's and it's 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 just not it's not, you know, mushy. Yeah. yeah. It's just That's enough there. Thing. So so that looks really nice. Mm. That looks really, really nice. So most important in all things, I've already seasoned, but I'm going to do a little bit more seasoning. Bob, these are looking great. And I mean, as we touched on, this is something that the whole family can have fun with. And, and it's just really easy way to use up all of your leftovers. And uh, you know that's exactly the sort of thing we we want people to um start doing and i think one of the things that shocked me last week was um the supermarkets if they if they turn up to someone's door with an online delivery and they're not home it's cheaper for them to actually just throw it all away rather than redistribute it so is that right it, that's amazing isn't it there's food going to waste that could go to families that really need it and yeah it is shocking really that that's the sort of thing that's going on that is, I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? When you think of that. Um, whilst you just, I just suddenly thought of something, you know, that if you did make, for instance, so I'm just gonna put that on there. If you made, for instance, um, I mean, look at those, look at those little ones there. Look at the, they're fantastic, aren't they? Looking I mean, they really lovely. so this is my cheese sauce, which I made earlier. So you see, kitchen management is also kitchen preparation. So let's just say, you made a big batch. You've got some old tomatoes, some onions, some courgettes, some peppers. You make a big batch of ratatouille. Put it in the freezer. They can all have ratatouille, you know. They can all have the cauliflower cheese. You can make a big batch of cheese sauce. Instead of making cheese sauce for one, a spaghetti bolognese, make a big one, you know. So now we're going to put some cheese on here, some fresh cheese, some nice cheddar on there. And, um, and then literally just stick them in the oven. I mean, you know, it's... Um, the whole process, as much as you could get the family together and, and the family would love, to, well, I want this one, I want that one, I want this one. Well, maybe each day or each week, you know, one of them has their favorite. And yeah, what are you gonna do gonna... with the mashed potato that you haven't used, Bob? What, where, where's that so, going? Well, I can, I, I'm, what I intend to do with it is put it through a ricer. Mm -hmm. And do you know what you can do with it? I mean, I was gonna do this as well, but again, I started to get a bit carried away. Hang on, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me put these in the oven. I think I'm ready now. Um, we're gonna stick that in, this is live cooking. Um, what I was going to do, I say cheers by the way, is I was going to, there's an amazing chef, uh, David, you and I know, a chef called Thomas Keller. That's yes. an amazing chef, probably the best chef in the world. One of his really fantastic dishes is twice baked potatoes. Basically, you get a potato skin, you rice 
your mashed potato, you make it really super, super rice, uh, really super, super um, uh, uh, fine. So you can pipe it. You put some nutmeg, you put some egg yolks, you put some cream, you put some butter, you make the most amazing mashed potato, very creamy, but pipeable. And then you pipe it back in your, your little skins. And so now you're taking your potato skin to another level. Um, or the other thing delicious. you can make, so out of this here, you make some potato cakes, which is basically just potatoes, egg yolks, and you mash mm -hmm. around with some flour, or you could put some spinach in, or you could put some cabbage in, or you can make a bubble and squeeze. Bubble and squeeze. You see, yes. yeah. There you are. You yeah. see, you see, and I've got some onions here that I've got cooked. So, it, right. it, you know, potato cakes go from, or you've got some salmon. Mm. You could put some salmon in there. You've got salmon fish cakes. I mean, <laughs> it just goes on and on and on. But the little tiny potato cakes, like an amused bouche potato cake, mm -hmm. you can put some, uh, some sour cream and some caviar on top. So from nowhere, from nowhere, we're de developing dishes mm -hmm. that will be served in a three mission star restaurant. So yeah, to ask the, the question was, what are you going to do with that? There's quite a lot you can do with that, actually. Yes. Yeah. I think that's um, the thing that we take from that is that you've just started with potato skins and you can then make potato cakes, you can make fish cakes, you can make all sorts of things out of just one potato. You add a few more ingredients and, you you know, you, you can do so much with it. And, and it, you know, food doesn't have to go to waste. It can be used all week, all week round and you can freeze it and use it again. And that's exactly what people should be doing. I think the problem at these can, by the way, these, I've still got these over, which I'm going to do a bit later as well for me, because I'm going to have some uh, and Donna will have some, but um, these can be wrapped up and frozen. So you can freeze your, your, your skins. Um, and um, I think the key is, you know, I, and, I, and I'm very aware that it's very easy for me to say, well, you can go from here to there, from here to there, you know, and make, I mean, you know, you can make potato cakes, potato and everything, you know, a potato is such a brilliant dish. But I have a lot of knowledge over the years of what you can do. And the hardest thing for people, and again, I go back to the family scenario of when you, you have to prepare, you know, every day, I think of what I'm going to prepare or the week, actually, because I work mm -hmm. on kitchen management. I think of what I'm going to do. And tomorrow I have another dish, which I'm going to use some cheese sauce. So I've already made too much cheese sauce that I need, but I'm going to use it tomorrow. Yes. Uh, and I use lots and lots of things. I freeze lots of dishes. I use lots of plastic cartons um, uh, and then nothing, you know, but really good plastic cartons and you can label them and you can just rotate it. But I'm always conscious of that, of the family situation, of the kids that want the food, <laughs> need good food. So, you know, but great pies, great stews, great... Um, uh, uh, especially at the moment, you know, the winter is fantastic for yes. uh, for good winter food. And, mm. you know, I, I just love, I did an osabuco. Now, again, that's a long process. Yeah. But, wow, what a dish at the end of it, you know. But it's basically veal. Yes. Braised veal, you know. It was, it was great. What about, you know, meat, Bob? You know, can, you know, meat in the fridge really go off? Or, you, you, you know, how, how, do you keep, how do you keep it going in the fridge? Um, you know, because very often you buy a big chicken or buy a big piece of beef, don't you? Or a side of lamb or something. Um, yeah. And you talk about ageing it. So help us out with that. Well, obviously, there is a timeline of everything. <laughs> Uh, when they age beef, they age it in the right uh, environment. You know, it's dry aged, it's sitting there, it's not sitting in a fridge with a whole load of other things. Mm. Um, it's in a very, you know, uh, dry, clean air. Um, so, but if you think about chicken, for instance, I mean, that's always a good one to use. So you buy a chicken, well, you can keep it for what, you know, a couple of days or so. You don't want to keep chicken too long. But then you cook, you roast the chicken. You roast the chicken, you then, depending on how many of you, you, you either portion that chicken, you, you eat the two of you, so you have you know half a chicken, you could then cut the rest of the chicken up and freeze it, you could put that into a chicken pie, you could put just the same process as we, use, as we think of turkey at Christmas. We never mm. think we're gonna eat the whole turkey. We always go to the turkey curry and the turkey and ham pie and all of these things. 
the same process. But then, of course, what you do is you use the carcass of the chicken to mm. make a great chicken stock or a great chicken soup. Mm. Because for chicken soup from that chicken will give you enough chicken and the vegetables that actually works out at about 40 pence a portion of great chicken wow. soup with orzo in. And, and I've done that many, many times and show people how you can. So now for your seven pound chicken, and I know it's seven pounds because I buy it up at the farm shop. Mm. Uh, and, and you're better, you know, I think you're better getting a really good chicken for seven pounds and a not very good chicken for three pounds, but I get all that. But if you actually work out the value, one, you're going to get a chicken that remains exactly the way almost you bought it. So you're going to get a lot more meat. Um, two, if there's four of you, you've got four great portions of food. So at the moment, as long with your potatoes and vegetables, you're still only a, you know, two pounds a portion, three pounds a portion, two and a half, two pound fifty portion. But now what you're going to do is you're going to use, because you won't get all of that chicken off, of course. Now you boil that carcass with vegetables for say two hours. And that is gonna give you enough time to let it cool down, take the meat off that chicken, let the whole thing cool down overnight, get your vegetables ready, get your pasta, your orzo ready and make out of that 10 portions of fantastic chicken soup. Mm -hmm. So now for, our, now for our seven pounds, we're really starting to bring the cost down. And that yeah. is, kitchen management and that is all about using things and being it, it within a sustainable way and we, absolutely and we really think about that do we sorry Finn. no not at all i was just going to agree with you on that point that a lot of people wouldn't maybe think that they could do it at home um and and just obviously through this conversation you've highlighted to us that there are these easy ways of, of using that uh, chicken it doesn't just have to be for your roast on a sunday and it can it can feed feed the family another meal or three meals throughout the week um bob it's obviously clear you've got a passion for food and and and, and the hospitality did that come across so why don't you why don't you tell us a little bit about uh how, how long you've been in the hospitality industry what you've done and and, and how you've got to where you are now um, so I started um, in the West End when I was 16 uh, as a chef. Uh, I went into hotel management um, and then I sort of really enjoyed cooking uh, and it paid better as well. So I thought, well, that, that'll work on that one. And anyway, the sous chef that I had went up, up north and he took me with him. I went to Scotland and I just carried on in the kitchen. And for me, um, David won't know this, but won't be too surprised. I started my first restaurant when I was 24 years old. Um, not so far on the other side of Reading, over that side near Sonning. Which one was and, it? Um, it was called Petit Village way back, but very close to the French Horn in Sonning. Yes. Um, and so um, uh, I started that when I was 24. I then moved, bought another one when I was 27. I then bought another one when I was 33. Uh, and, uh, and then the whole inventing world came into my, my life. And we started the, the venue that I owned had a, quite a few acres. So we started doing big weddings and parties and corporate events. And, and that took me to 2000 where we did the Cisco um, uh, Millennium Party for a thousand. We did the Auto Trader Millennium Party for a thousand. And these were massive events, you know, these are big, big parties. And uh, then the eventing world just took me took over me, me really. And I just really enjoyed that side. So I sort of came out of the kitchen, as they say. Uh, and I was very much uh, in the front, you know, meeting people. And uh, I got involved with the Restaurant Association, uh, which I loved and still love. And I've been involved in the Restaurant Association for 29 years. Um, and then everything else sort of around that, which has given me the, uh, the people that I've met, you know, within all the world of the chef's world. And I, I know so many and they're great friends and I'm very lucky and honored to know them all and for them to know me. We create events where we invite them to. So I run the Restaurant Association Gala Dinner. I run the International Restaurateurs Dinner. I run World Young Chef, Young Waiter. I run the Michelin Revelation, which was revealing the Michelin stars, uh, all the new Michelin stars that happened just, just last month. So it's a really exciting world that I live in. But you know, it, it, uh, with all of that going on and with all of my 
<laughs> my ambition and vision for the future, which is no, no more less than it was when I was 24 at my, mm -hmm. oh gosh, I'm 64, God, hang on a second, um, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I still have a passion and desire to grow and keep developing concepts and ideas. But this period of time in my life has just been, I'm not going to say it's been incredible due to the lockdown, because the lockdown has been a, a, you know, tough on all of us and, and our business, and no two ways about it. But for me personally, it's been a wonderful time to just love, learn and love about food again, you know, and learn about food. I made, I'm going to show you something. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on, look, I made hot cross buns. Oh, wow. Now, they look fantastic. <laughs> they, they, they look <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I made hot cross buns. Hot cross buns, let me tell you, I followed Mary Berry's recipe. I love Mary Berry. Um, yeah. I followed her for baking. I think she's the best. So it's a long process, which is why I've never got into baking because I like things that are quick and simple and things that you can do like now quickly, you know, because I'm a chef and I'm an aluminute chef. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm on the pass, I'm serving, I'm preparing, I'm out. Whereas my hot cross buns, you know, I start, it's then it's an hour and a half, first hour <laughs> yeah. and a half to let them prove and let them rise. Then you come back and you play a bit and then you leave them for another hour. And then you come back and you cut them into their little shape and then you leave them for another hour. And you're like, oh God almighty, you know. I mean, what do you do all day when you're baking? But um, anyway, I'm very happy with my hot cross buns. I'm actually oh, gonna I'm, do them. I can't wait to see that going up on, on your Instagram. I expect Absolutely, that's going yeah. up soon, isn't it? That, that, that's, uh, that'd be amazing. And obviously on your um, Instagram channel, um, you share all these uh, wonderful recipes that you're doing every day and using the food that you've got from the local market and that you've got in in uh, in, in your house it's just great to see how you're using everything and you've obviously developed this love for food and to, to continue that is just amazing but um you know you've touched on kitchen management and it's clear that you've always thought uh, a few steps ahead but maybe you could just give us a little bit um of a sort of simple step to step of how we can just really plan our kitchen through the week and, and make sure that we're not wasting anything? So it's a really good question. And, um, and you literally have to, and, and, and it would be easy for me to show someone, you have to plan your weekly shop, of course. And people don't. I know they don't, because I don't. You know, what do we need from a card or what we need from, you know, oh, well, have we got enough hula hoops? You know, I love hula hoops, you know, <laughs> and I don't know. Well, we haven't looked. Oh, well, we'll order some anyway. Do you know what I mean? I mean, we're all guilty of it. But if you really are thinking about it now in what I do in my head, what I'm preparing for the week, I know, but I'm not thinking of other things. I'm not thinking of very liquid. I'm not thinking. I'm just thinking of what I'm going to do for the week. So. Your menus, what are you going to cook for that week? What are you going to do? Because ultimately, this will guarantee to save you money and you will not be wasting food. It's guaranteed. Because it, it cannot fail because you're going to plan your week's menus. Now, that mm. menu might be, you know, egg and bacon anymore. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm. But you're going to plan your week's menu. You're going to plan your week's dishes. What are you going to cook? What are you then going to do and what is going to go into next what are you going to put in the freezer for next week it's just literally i mean we call it mise en place the mise en place is what i've done here but your mise en place is in your preparation is in your preparation for your weekly shop and it's about now it's easy because what happens is you get your little diary or your book or your iphone or whatever it is and you have the dishes that you your favorite dishes your mm. six favorite dishes that you like cooking so that's fine. You know, your family aren't going to be coming in demanding new dishes and we want Osabuco <laughs> and the shanks of lamb and steak Diane and lobster. You know, they just want to know what they're going to eat. And you need to know what you're going to serve and how you're going to do it and how you can then do uh, working online. Right, we're almost there. Working online at the same time, you know, like running 
having a, you've got a job as well. Mm. You're doing your job and you're cooking for the family and, and you're trying to look after the house and you're trying to homeschool. I mean, mm. goodness me, let me tell you, I, you know, that's tough. So the more you can help yourself, the more time you will mm. get. Because mm. David, you know, when you, when you um, walk into the kitchen, when you've got a kitchen running, the team come in. These days, a kitchen is like a Formula One garage. Yes, it is. It's quiet. It's mm. beautiful. Everything's clean. Everything's immaculate. Everyone mm. knows where they're going. I mean, it is a work of art. It's a wonderful thing to watch. Not from our, it's not um, like our days, is it? <laughs> it's not, not, hang on. It's definitely not like our days when it was all screaming and shouting and oh, woof, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, honestly, in those days, I mean, it's changed so much and it's so brilliant. Yeah. And David, where you live, you know, there's so many kitchens that are open kitchens. Yes. And those open kitchens are so fantastic. Right. I mm. think we're about ready. Yeah. So hang on. We will bring out what we've got here. And we'll put those well, there. They are. They're looking very tasty. Very, very they're jealous. They're looking great, aren't they? Look. We're not and there I mean, with you to trial. <laughs> so I will just bring that back a bit. Whilst I just do this. But, you know, we've done it all, all live. I'll put these on, I'll put these on one dish here. I should put them on this dish. You can almost smell them, can you, Finn? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, you, you eat with your eyes and uh, I'm certainly, certainly, certainly very hungry right now. But it, it's I mean, all these ingredients, Finn, that would have gone to waste almost, you know. 100%, you know, and, and I think a lot of people might see um, cooking as a bit of a chore when they get home from work but this is the sort of thing that can just be really easy and re really fun with the family and you know they just look David, so David, tasty. listen David, yeah. yep hang on, can you hear the crispy? Yes, yes, crispy crispy, yes, so we've, they've actually crisped up quite a lot, I've put them in quite yes. a high oven but yes. um, I'm going to show you these in a second, I'm going to put them on here you can see all, mm. all of them in a second and um, yeah, all this would go I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, if you don't use it up, it's going to go to waste. Mm. Put, that there, put that one there. You always have the asbestos fingers when, you, when you've come out. <laughs> the kitchen, don't you? you learn, you learn, you learn years of it. Yes. Years of it. And I would actually have some on there. I would actually also put some sour cream on top of that, on yeah. top of that um, ratatouille one. Um, and so, you know, literally, I've got a bit of I, look here because I had some parsley. I even got a picture of the parsley because the parsley was about to die. So I thought, well, I'll quickly chop that up. Yes. And, and you know, in, in whatever time it was, I mean, those look amazing. Those are the ones. They just look beautiful. Lovely. But the, one, the ones that really, well, the two that were going to be my favourites were going to be the Dauphinoise. So they have to be, mm. that's wow. double cream, onions, leeks, and salt. I mean, it has to be, I want a bit of cheese. It's yes. got to be brilliant, hasn't it? Yes, yes. absolutely. And, and this one here, I mean, how pretty is that? Beautiful. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, and the cauliflower cheese has got to be brilliant. So, mm. and of course your bacon and cheese ones are the ones that we all know. Yeah. Um, and, um, and these are, don't forget, by the way, that one, is the only one that's not vegetarian. All those are vegetarian. Oh, they they cool. just look fantastic and so easy for people to make at home and, and, and use those leftovers. I mean, thank you very much for showing us uh, that method and, and sharing that with us. But um, we also just wanted to talk to you a little bit about food poverty in the UK, because um, I'm sure you'll be aware that there's, there's plenty of, of of things that we need to face as a country really um you know an, an estimated 8.4 million people are living in food poverty uh, and food waste contributes towards this and and it really could help people that are suffering so for example mm. foodworks who who we're partnering with in, in uh, sheffield they're trying to use this food surplus to feed people who really really are struggling and, and i'm sure you can let us know how important that is well it's vital isn't it we worked with street smart as well i think street smart are the um, mm. In fact, Michelin was sponsoring, were, were, were uh, not sponsoring, were supporting Street Smart, which is exactly the same program, I think, mm. as far as I've got it, which is basically, you know, looking after people. And, um, and you know, it, it just, 
beggar's belief, doesn't it, that you throw away all this food and there's people on the street starving. I mean, you just can't, you know, what you said earlier on, Finn, on if if somebody's not in, it's cheaper to throw the food away than, than try and, and then give it to somebody else, you know. Mm. I think we have to get away from the this uh, health and safety scenario on the fact is, well, it's not, you know, if it's not as easy as that, we can't just give it to somebody because if somebody, you know, gets food poisoning from whatever, well, we're not going to give them food. It's going to give them food poisoning, we're mm. going to say. What I also loved was the, the route on, on wobbly veg. I mean, you know, I don't know, wait, I don't know what they still do it. But when I go to my farm shop, the last thing I do is look at whether the carrot is straight or not. Yes, you know, yeah. uh, honestly. So if we just take that bit alone, I sort of get the issues on food at the end of its time. And is it safe? And how does one do it? And, you know, and somebody suing you for doing, you know, I sort of get it. Mm. I, I'm sure there's a way around it, but what I don't get is, well, whether it's going to carry on under the European rules and a, a banana has to be this level and a cucumber has to be that, and you know, uh, and yet all my vegetables that I grow in my garden, which is not a lot, but it's enough. So basically, yeah, this, the, the, the route that really, I think, is just ridiculous, and it really is ridiculous, is that we throw away vegetables. Let's just take vegetables. I don't know about other 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 products. I'm not quite sure whether sausages are made for the right, whether it's in the same category, but we throw away tons, tons of vegetables because they don't fit the right size or they're not grown the right. I mean, and that for me is just insane. I mean, mm. I don't get it. When, when what we need is vegetables, if we need anything to make us, you know, to be or to be healthy, you need nutrition. And if you need nutrition, if you have nutrition, you've got good immune system. If you've got a good immune system, you start to be protected against viruses and other things. So it just seems to me off the charts that we would throw away you know, you guys would have the statistics much more than I would on what is being thrown away and what isn't. But that for me, above all else, just seems complete and utter madness, you know. Absolutely, when you could yeah. give that to all of the, you know, you could give a bag the size of a, you know, Christmas sack to every mm. family. Uh, and it would be like Christmas, by the way, to every family who need it on food banks and everything else, just great big bag of onions and vegetables and a big bag of pasta and, you know, amazing. Mm. I, I completely agree. And I think last week, um, Josie from Foodworks touched on one supplier uh, had five tons of tomatoes that just weren't perfect for their quiche. So wanted to get rid of those. And that's one supplier, five tons of tomatoes. It's just such a alarming amount of vegetables that are just are getting thrown away in the uk and mm -hmm. if these can be used absolutely you, you show think how many think how many potato skins we can make with five tons of tomatoes it's, true, <laughs> isn't it? it's, it's so absolutely if, if that can be yeah. used to feed these people in the uk that that we can help what while absolutely mm -hmm. we should be doing our bit and um i think you know our partner foodworks are just starting that but they they want us to help spread the message and, and get everyone on board. And we can all do our bit, can't we? On a, on a small level, large level, and, and uh, yeah. really help out. And Finn, I mean, you that, that, there you go. I mean, that's just, uh, it's mind blowing, isn't it? I mean, of all the things you could do, you know, I mean, give it to, I mean, take the tomatoes to a school mm. and get the school to turn it into, because schools are still open, mm. uh, but they haven't got any kids. So why not the school canteen who would love to do it turn five tons, or well not five tons, but turn, yeah. you know, a lot of tomatoes into a fantastic soup and give it to the local, I don't know, you know, it just, just yeah. beyond me, but none of the, you know, somebody's got to do it. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to organize it. Somebody's going to take it. But you would think that the person throwing away the tomatoes would think, can't we just do something with these? Mm -hmm. Mm. absolutely yeah but you know finn, it's sorry david sorry finn why don't you tell us a little bit about foodworks and what you as a cohort 
are aiming to achieve to support them through through this series of podcasts and yeah and through your studies absolutely so we're very proud to be partnered with foodworks they're a great not-for-profit uh, organization in sheffield and what they're doing is they're taking in um what would be surplus foods from supermarkets and other suppliers as we've mentioned that would otherwise be going to, into the bin uh, and they're repurposing it creating meals creating food boxes that people can just make a minimum contribution for so anyone can access it that is um that just needs that, um, I, whether it be the ease of having the food made for them or people that maybe are struggling and, and they want to get food for cheaper. So, you know, it's a minimum contribution and this food would be going to waste. So, you know, it really is an excellent model for what we can do with food waste to help people that are struggling as well. But yeah. they really do rely on support of volunteers. They have a great base of volunteers right now, but they also really need financial support and it would be just great if people could you know make a regular donation anything small or large helps them out and it, you know we're trying to spread the message with this campaign but also it just would be fantastic if people could make a donation and anyone that does want to make a donation will have the um, opportunity to send us their confirmation on our email which we'll include here but it's sustainability series pod at outlook.com and we will be running a competition towards the end of the um, campaign with some great prizes that you can win for uh, helping oh, that's out. Good job. That's fantastic. I've just been looking at some of the pictures I took earlier on. And I mean, I wasn't joking when I said, you know, this was the, this was the end of, this yeah. was exactly, you know, it wasn't me just sort of going, I mean, that was the end of the piece of pepper that I found in the fridge. And, and the, the leaks were equally, <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, this is not, this was not pristine veg, but yeah. you know, a leak on the outside, I mean, take away a couple of layers of skin, you've got lovely leaks. Mm -hmm. And I just think that I just wanted to do what you asked me to do mm. and do it in my own fridge, you know, and what, Absolutely. And, and the other thing that funnily enough, my wife did is that we used up, we had a lot of vegetables, we had some courgettes and, stuff, and just roast the vegetables, you know, mm. just roasted those off. Um, and a little bit of olive oil and seasoning. And oh my God, I mean, just as a, I think, look here, actually, look, I actually haven't seen this. Huh? So, and there's Donna, mm. just a whole mixture of roasted vegetables mm. that were just sitting there. And it's fantastic. I mean, and you can use those as bases of all kinds of things, but mm -hmm. I think we've covered a lot. I mean, if people follow those, these messages, then, you know, you really should, one reduce spending to mm. save a lot of money yeah absolutely oh. bob thank you so much and you know you've really showed us how easy it can be and the nutrition and, and everything that can come with it so you know it's been an absolute pleasure thank you from myself thank you from the university i finished my thank champagne you. now but it was <laughs> i've been i mean i didn't want to waste any of course no thank you thank you bob it's great to see you again and uh we look forward to seeing you at whatever next meeting it is we, we, we end up talking about. We're talking about a lot lately, aren't we? And, we are. Uh, we uh, are. Which, is, which is very exciting. Finn, All right. well done. Lovely. you guys are thank doing you. an amazing job. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Me. And uh, Bye, thank you. we'll see you all Bye, soon. Everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.